Welcome, friends. Today we are making something called chorba, um, which sounds fancy, but really it just means soup. Um, the base word has a whole bunch of different spellings depending on what language is using it, but in all of these languages, it just means soup. Um, and so it starts out like almost every soup, a little bit of oil in the bottom of a heavy pot, and we have onion, celery, and carrot. And we're just going to fry that off to soften them up. So this is one of those recipes that I was researching, and I came across dozens and dozens of soups that if you put them all side by side, you would say they're all the same. Um, with very minor variations depending on regionality and who had written the original recipe. And they all started out the same. They all started out with these three ingredients in a pot with olive oil. Next in, they put in a protein. And depending on whether you were in southeastern Europe or North Africa, the protein would change a little bit. And it could be chicken, it could be beef, it could be goat, or it could be lamb. And today I'm going to use lamb because I really like lamb. But that protein just varied on where you were, but it was always sort of one of those four. So you could use any one of those four if you wanted to. Next in was the spicing. And depending on where the recipe was written, um, there was usually a list of five or six, seven different spices. And every time I looked at it, I'd look at the spicing and I'd say, that's Ras Al Hanout. Um, you know, under different names. And in North Africa, they would actually call for Ras Al Hanout. So I started thinking, well, let's just kind of take a soup, bring it together, and, uh, and make it my way. But it sort of falls into a category that is a soup across a very wide swath of the planet. So this is nice and soft. Next in goes the lamb. And in every case, um, with these recipes, they didn't really brown off the protein. It pretty much went in with the mirepoix or the sofrito or whatever you want to call that mixture of vegetables and was cooked down just a little bit, um, but never really getting brown, which is kind of outside my tradition of making soup. I would have browned the protein, um, but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. Okay, next in is our homemade ras al hanout. Um, Somewhere between one and two tablespoons, depending on how much flavor or spice you want in the dish. And we'll put that in and we'll just sort of cook it into the meat and the veg a little bit. Let me tell you, that smells amazing. So next in are some tomatoes and chicken stock. Now I'm using chicken stock because we always have chicken stock on hand here in the test kitchen. Um, if you were making this with beef, you could use beef stock. Um, if you had lamb stock, that would be absolutely amazing if you were using lamb. Same with goat, if you had goat stock. Unfortunately, I don't have any. The chicken stock is a nice neutral flavor though, and it will go really well with this dish. So, I'm just going to stir that together. Put a lid on it and let it simmer for a couple of hours. All right. So next in, uh, I'm going to put some chickpeas and some barley. Now, all of the recipes that I found for this type of soup either had a type of pulse, which is a chickpea or a lentil or a bean of some sort. Um, so I'm going to use chickpeas because I really like chickpeas. Or they had a grain like uh, barley that I'm using right now, and you can use pot barley or pearl barley. Some of them had bulgur or oats or wheat. Um, so pretty much, or even rice. So at this point you could put any of those things in that you like in any combination and it would be fine. So, gave that a stir, I'm going to put the lid back on and just leave it on a low simmer for about another half hour. So if you like lamb, this smells absolutely amazing. And the smell actually takes me back to when I was a little kid. And one of my grandmothers made scotch broth all the time, which is a lamb soup with barley. Um, 
And even though the spicing will be completely different between those two soups, I get that smell, that, that nose. It just smells amazing. This is a soup of beauty. Um, I like all of these flavors, and I can see how you could change the protein and change the flavor. Um, you could change the spicing and change the flavor. I mean, if you didn't put Ras Al Hunut in here, this could be scotch broth, um, just a little bit of spicing change. And it's amazing how very diverse cultures from a very large geographical area can have soups that are so similar um, because they're filling and they taste great and this would be great on a cold winter's day. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.